up and then we heard about the vandalism, so we came to the cemetery. Stuart called us. Stuart called us and he let us know, and you know, and he sent us a picture. So we came and we saw that the headstone of my great great grandmother, my mom's grandmother, was knocked over. So it's an unfortunate event. I guess we're back here today to kind of, you know, see everything repaired, and we saw the great response. And the governor came, and the vice president came. Um, unfortunately, recently we found out, you know, there's a similar incident that just took place in Philadelphia. So, you know, maybe the more we kind of dig into this, the more we'll find out what's going on and get some sort of closure. Uh, Fanny Clayman, my uh, grandmother, was born in St. Louis uh, a long time ago, and Cecil Clayman was born in Ukraine. He immigrated to the United States before the Holocaust, though he did have some family members that were lost. So it says here about my grandmother that she was a model of courage and grace. I remember her well. We used to go there uh, every other week. And then later on in her life, she used to come by us every week for Shabbat. And I remember her cooking and, you know, always being very kind to us and caring about us and caring very much about her entire extended family. Um, and <coughs> Cecil, or Meshulam Zisya Barat Svi Hirsch, his name in Hebrew over there, and my grandmother Svega Bat Rabbi Yisrael Svi. Um, unfortunately, I did not know him. Uh, he passed away when I was very, very young. However, I do know him through other people because as I was growing up, people would always tell me what a wonderful person that he was. And for years and years, even, even now, occasionally I will hear that. And I think I know that the two of them have instilled something special in my extended family. I can see it throughout my family, wherever they are, from the Midwest to the Mideast, from the East Coast to the West Coast and places in between. So many of them have these really, really special, special traits. Um, I also want you to see here, this is what my cousin Susie from, uh, from uh, Portland, this is what she left here by the graves. I know Susie has been there when I, been here when I see this because um, she always brings seashells from uh, the Pacific Ocean to place here. Mm. In Judaism, it is a, uh, when one visits a grave, they put a rock or some type of permanent marker uh, at a person's grave. And um, my cousin Susie has put these here. So I come here, I can also think about my, about my cousin Susie. Um, so um, now I will say a little prayer. Had three men in a crane trying to put one stone back on its face. My name is Maxima, and this is my mom, Sally Amon. So her former, her maiden name is Hutkin, which are the graves that are affected. So that family, they came, they came over from Russia through Ellis Island into the U.S. And um, her husband, who I'm named after, is actually, we're going to have to go find his grave, but he's buried nearby, and he was a shoemaker. You know, and sometimes I want to make shoes, but not here. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so my father's family actually came from Istanbul. So the thing is, a lot of the times I hear things about family and, you know, it, it like rings, but it's, you know, a little further away because I've never really been to Istanbul. I haven't seen anything, you know, so when we heard about it here, it hit, it hit a lot closer to home because this is, you know, where we grew up in St. Louis and 
this is where we live, so it was a pretty, you know, powerful experience to come in to see, you know, all of the graves knocked over, not just, you know, the family ones, but to see family as well was, you know, a harrowing experience. So this is my grandmother's stone, and she was knocked backwards, so we could easily find her. Mm. And of course, you know, when we came, I was very emotional and crying, and, and just because it was just the, the point of who would want to do this. I mean, even though they're gone, it's still sacred ground. And she was, she was born in Kovno, and she was a beauty queen and an ice skater, and her husband, Max, who my son is named after, he passed away before her in, what, 1925, I think? Sure. And she raised eight children on her own in the Depression. boarding house and she had to do it all on her own and my sister Anita is named after Anna so I, I, I was um, interviewed by the post and I told them that the night that I heard that I felt very uneasy I felt like her grave had been disturbed and I don't know why I had no idea and I said maybe she sent me a message I just felt funny so when Stuart called me I thought oh that's, that's really eerie so That's an amazing amount. Certainly appreciate all of that. Oh, definitely. Um, when, when I saw this, I did not know uh, Anna, but I knew her son Henry, your, your dad, yeah. who, who passed away at the age of 97 in uh, 2010. Right. Um, and I knew him pretty well, and um, he was a person who certainly stood up against anti-Semitism. Yes, he did. I mean, he would tell <laughs> uh, the story, uh, a few of his stories. Uh, he would tell stories of uh, the anti-Semitism that he endured and and overcame, and. Uh, and when I saw this, uh, the first thing I thought about was, uh, you know, how would, you know, Ed Henry feel about saying that his mother's great son would have been the, uh, knocked over in an act of anti-Semitism. And that really, uh, that was very upsetting. So would you like me to tell us no, one right, of the stories? No. Sally, it's why don't you tell, will, will tell oh, Go the ahead, story. Sally, I'm sorry. The slim story? Yeah. No, no, you have to tell the slim story, but <laughs> you're right, he would have been very upset because he always taught me when I was young to be very proud of being Jewish. Okay, so now we're uh, getting into a story about Henry in World War II. <laughs> <laughs> Henry Hutkin, Anna's son. Yeah. Uh, who is about, who is 5'3. He's about yeah. as tall as you, Sally. I'm 5'3. He was 3 inches taller than me. Uh, okay. Somewhere, somewhere between the two of us. He was yeah. like, yay, high old man with the pencil mark in his head. Yeah, Nobody true. knows where it came that's from. That's true. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he was a, um, how would you say? Muscular guy. He was. Yeah, he was in shape, in shape guy. And he tells this story about being in the army, and there was this guy named Slim. Yeah. Who, who was? How tall was he? He was at least six feet, I think. Very big I think he uh, continued to grow over the years. <laughs> uh, he, was, he, he was a very big guy who kept on bugging him and say, "Jew, you gotta do this. Jew, yes. you gotta do that." All the time. So one time they were out, um, I don't know, digging something, latrines or something, and he was going, Jew, and he said he'd had enough. So he took his shovel and he hit Slim over the head. And they get in a fight. And they get brought up to in front of their officer and say, what's going on? And, he's, and, and he tells Slim, you know, you can't be doing this. And after that, Slim would look out for him and make sure that everything was okay right, and he didn't have any more right. problems. Right, because he respected him because he stood up to him. That's just one of the stories right. of that time, right. 
Everybody has a story and uh, their families that are very, very saddened by all of this. Up here by this tree, this one here that's laying on the ground. Uh, graves, and I did. I was asked to look up, and it was I, the names were Beerman, and I saw one which is actually broken, and that was from 1913. It wasn't on the list of names I had. And I was wondering if you had a list of relatives from 1913, and if this is from my family, what steps should it take to repair it? This is a list of the ones that were tipped over. This is the bullhorn that was used and we're trying to locate who left the bullhorn. <laughs>